I am Araceli, a wealth advisor, real estate investor in the United States and Canada, and creator of Wealthy Women in Real Estate. Every week, I meet with Colette, a real estate broker and a real estate investor in Canada. We come together to talk about all things real estate investing and how to increase your wealth. Join us. Welcome, everyone. This is Araceli, Transition Wealth Advisor and Real Estate Investor in the U.S. and Canada. And remember, if you're looking to start investing and don't have a lot of money and you're in Canada, it may make sense for you to do it in the U.S. I specialize on that, so let me know if you'd like to have more information. I'm here with my partner, Colette, today in our chat. Colette, can you introduce yourself and tell us what we're talking about? Sure. Hi, everybody. My name is Colette Rabba. I am a residential real estate broker in the GTA. Um, I help homeowners and home sellers and home buyers and everybody who owns a home or wants to own a home. <laughs> oh, own a home. Oh my God, what day is today? <laughs> I need more coffee. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I help them buy and sell and invest. And that's why Aerosol and I really like to have this chat because we want to share whatever little tidbits information we have with you so you can become an investor and also uh, feel more confident becoming an investor. So we are here to answer your questions. So please keep them coming. Uh, this is what we do on the show. We answer your questions as best we can, and hopefully that'll get you moving in the right direction. So today we are talking about what most people know the term Airbnb or VRBO, which is vacation rental or a short-term rental. These are all interchangeable terms. Airbnb obviously is a company, VRBO is a company, uh, and they set you up with, you know, they help landlords and tenants match with the property. So it's a little bit different than a long-term lease and we want to uh, go beyond that. So if you understand that concept, what we we're talking about today is as you being an investor, do you think Airbnb is right for you or maybe it's not for you? So this is, we want to give you a little insight on that because we are both investors and we both, uh, I have short-term accommodations. I have long-term. I finally convinced her to get in there. Yep. <laughs> so she's going to be doing that. Um, and also we, we're in the business. We hear a lot of good stories. We hear a lot of bad stories and we want to help you just realize is short-term rental or Airbnb right for you? So what's the first thing we have to talk about? Uh, well, so the first thing is, if you are already an investor, you will have a much better idea if that would be a good fit for you. But if you are not, actually this way may allow you to get your feet wet and see if your sale investing is for you. And exactly. It, it has very little things that you need to do that we're going to talk about today, but it will give you an idea of what it's, you know, what do you need well, to do? I'll give you an example. I'll give you the, the best example that I know uh, as far as knowing if you want to invest. So let's just say I have a house and I have a basement that, you know, my kids are grown, yeah. they've moved out and I have this basement and I could generate a little bit in, of income coming in, but I don't know if my kids are going to come for Christmas or if they want to come and stay or if I have in-laws or whatever it is that somebody, I, I can't have a full-time renter in there but it's also my home and I'm not comfortable having someone in there 24 seven. I would like to have a little bit of space in between. Uh, I might sell my house. So this is sort of in your mind, if you don't want something that's so permanent, like a tenant, a full-time tenant, a one-year lease or more tenant in there, this could be the best way to get your feet wet. So even a room, even uh, you can have an, even if, let's say you have a condo, this has yeah. happened to me. We went to Europe and uh, there was somebody renting. And I'm not saying you should do this as a renter, but in my case, this is what happened. We went to Europe. There was a young uh, uh, person that was putting their apartment up just to make ends meet. Mm -hmm. Airbnb, they went and stayed over at a friend's house for a couple of days and slept at their friend's house. It was really 
very low key. We didn't even know if they rented or if they actually own the apartment. None of our business. We don't care. Everything was fine. <laughs> so if, and there are questions you have to ask too, before yeah. you start this. So well, let's say you don't own a home. Yeah. So it all comes down to your goals, right? So yeah, that is a good, very good point, Colette, because if you don't own a home, uh, if you want to get started in real estate, but you have a big apartment or a big house that you're renting, you need to check with your landlord if that is okay. So it depends where you are. So you have to be very yeah. careful on that. Yeah, okay. that's very key. So yeah. the goals is obviously if you want to have more income through some kind of investment, which is obviously you're going to be providing a service by either allowing somebody to stay in a room or in part of your house. So that is so, so important to have a goal. What do you want to accomplish? And also know a little bit more about the second part, which is you do your research. Colette, you want to talk about that? Yes, absolutely. So research is, is quite a lot. So I think this is the most important thing. Actually, you know what? To be quite honest, I just had a conversation I completely forgot last week with uh, a, a prior um, uh, a client that has a condo mm -hmm. and they want to go to Europe for about six months. She's just retired. So now she's asking me, what do I do with my apartment? Do I sell it? Or I said, well, you know what? Go check your condo board rules first if they allow short-term tenancy, number one. If they don't, then we can do something. And, you know, not to say this out loud, but there is a gray area in between a short-term accommodation and a long-term accommodation and what that means. And depending on the laws of your country or in our case, the province, there are some differences between a long-term tenant and a short-term tenant or an Airbnb tenant. So these are things that you have to do some research on fundamentally before you even look at numbers. Yeah. Number two is numbers. What kind of numbers do we need to look at? So you take it away. <laughs> yeah. So so this is, there, well, obviously, first of all, is how much income you want to have from your Airbnb. The second is, is the area that you're in desirable for short-term renters? Exactly. Because you might yeah. be really far away from transportation, from many things that most people won't want to go there, right? Right. And yeah. also you have to look at what is it that, people around your area are charging for a room. Uh, if you do have different amenities, some people have a room that has a, a separate bathroom. So they have a bathroom just with the room. They yeah. still have to share all other things like the kitchen and they have to go through the house in order to get to, to the room. But if some people have areas that are completely separate. That means they have their own entrance that they don't have to see anybody. You might charge a little bit more. So you have to do kind of a comparable, right? Am I renting a room, a room with a bathroom or a completely separate entrance? Also sure. finishes that you have are important because some people that have like just a basic thing, they might charge less money. But if you have a little bit nicer, things, you have the bathroom and you provide all of the amenities, you might get a little bit more money. So that's the second thing that you need to do. Right. Well, that I was just going to elaborate on that with um, mm -hmm. with uh, having an, a short-term accommodation. Most likely an Airbnb means not only do you have to furnish the house, but you also have to have all the small things like yeah. toilet paper and Kleenex and dishwashing liquid and shampoo and soap. And things like that, where there is a lot of upkeep there. And you, if you're not close by and you're not going to do the work yourself, you should hire a property manager. You might have the cost of a cleaning person come in and, you know, do the beds and do the, the switch over when you have another guest. You might have to have a lawn person or somebody maintaining the exterior of the house or the mm -hmm. building. So there's all these extra costs and this overhead that is going to be more expensive than let's say having a long-term tenant that you don't need to furnish the property. You don't need to have all these sheets and towels and linens. So, so these are the things that you have to factor in when you decide to go ahead and do it this way. Um, and really, you know what? I prefer it only it for my properties that I have. It doesn't mean to say that I 
I, I don't want a full-time tenant or I wouldn't be interested in a full-time tenant, but websites like Airbnb give you the option to saying, you know, to, to give the option to that person to say, if you'd like to stay longer than let's say two weeks, we'll give you a discount. And that's really up to you to say, I don't mind having someone staying for six months because I have trouble doing that turnover all the time. So if somebody wants to stay all, let's say summer in certain locations, then they can, you get the benefit of having it full the whole time, but at a little bit of a discount. So those are things that you have to think about and do your research as far as what Araceli was saying, your competition. So go take a look at, at who's in the area. It's very easy to look at. You don't have to do any, you know, spying. It's not nefarious or anything. <laughs> so it's all public information. You can go on to these websites like Airbnb, yeah. um, uh, VRBO and other ones as well, uh, just to take a look and see what the area can bring. So quite, quite simple, right? Yeah, absolutely. So just remember that, first of all, you have to look at your goals. If this is something that you want to do, if you want to become an investor, I think it is a really easy way to kind of put your toe in the water, right? And see if this would work for you. Some people, they really don't like having other people in their home. And depending on how often you're going to be renting it, like if you're doing it, for one night, uh, in my opinion, I would say minimum three nights, at least for where I am going to be doing this, um, because otherwise it's too much management having to do the cleanup. Turnover, yeah, the turnover, yeah. right. And then yeah, exactly. the second thing is obviously where are you going to advertise it? If you're going to put it in Air Airbnb, VRBO, are you going to do your own advertising? Uh, there's, you know, free websites that you can advertise. There's this. Facebook, there yeah. is Kijiji, there's all these other places, but it's also how you vet your tenants or, or you know, the people. Correct. So that's a whole other show. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll, Correct. we'll talk about that after. Yeah. Yeah. So, so make sure that you understand and you do the proper research, uh, not only that if you're allowed to do it where you are, but also how much money you can charge per night. And if you're going to be doing a discount, if they want to stay for a little bit longer. Uh, so that would be that one. And then uh, the last one is basically know, know yourself. What yeah. you're going to be doing. You if you're not going to be the manager, if you don't live in, the, in that property, then how far are you? Are you going to be able to do the turnover yourself or get somebody right. else to do it you probably need something i think once one thing that we didn't touch up on is the advertising cost i was going to say something else too actually mm -hmm. we didn't talk about insurance and how it's so important to get the right kind of insurance especially in your house you have to call your insurance company to say hey if i have a tenant come in what changes about my policy and will yep. i be covered so sometimes insurance your, your companies won't allow short-term accommodation. They don't yeah. like it. So make sure you see that as well and, and put factor that into your overhead costs. So, Absolutely. Yeah. So and I advertising. Yeah. You know what? I, I don't spend any advertising money on my properties. Yeah. So. In some cases you don't have to depending on the area. In some other cases I've seen uh, people that do have cottages like sometimes people don't look for the area and it's beautiful. So if you yeah. need to do some little advertising, so that's why it's so important to figure out where you are, what the area is, and what is the demand for yeah. uh, short-term accommodations. Or, or like you said, out of the country too, where you are you don't have access to the local directories and stuff like that's that, right. that you might have to have a property manager uh, to advertise in the right you know, to get the right people to come in too. So yeah, for sure. I think that's enough for today. Oh my that's God. It. Yeah. <laughs> so if you do have any questions, just remember to send us a message. Uh, we're here to talk to you and get you questions and hopefully more material for you. So I hope this helped you and we'll see you at the next one. Thanks everybody. Bye. Thank you for being here on the show. Please remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell to get notified when there are more shows available. And if you would like to have more information on how to start investing in real estate, please visit my website at www.aracelihernandez.com.
Thank you.